beyond and Nigeria. It's indeed time to get a talking here on Sports Central this morning. And Blind Insurance Conversation, Blind, it's a very fine morning uh, to have you return here. So good to be on the show. <laughs> oh, it's the line. Yeah, you go for jogging this morning. No. All right. Uh, seems like you in, you engage in some energy sapping venture early today. Plenty. Uh, your voices. You, you like noticing things. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help but notice. The things are there to be noticed. <laughs> yeah, so I picked I'm, them up. I'm cool. I'm cool today. All right, good. Uh, like yesterday, my voice was a little down. But yeah. I think today is better. Uh, it still sounds a little down, though. Uh, just keep it rolling. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll try to get those kind of things that would get you. No, Brian James. I, just, <laughs> I think I'll, I'll try to get those kind of things in. <laughs> just like it would happen yesterday. Like, oh, come on. It's good to talk yeah. about this. Oh, uh, nice. Okay, sir. So I was accused of being the bass of fun yesterday. Uh, uh, <laughs> nice. Now, let's um, serve of the conversation this morning. Uh, we're done with the Miami Open. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and um, on the u.s opposite coast in florida we're talking about the event serving up for later today the miami open another 1000 masters event now let's begin from the wt we've got um, some model watching clashes you know alison van Utnick, um, alongside likes of amanda nismova shelby rogers and, and the rest of them zhang uh, you know the 19 year old um, youngster also on parade later today it makes for great opening but before that let's talk about the pedigree of this tournament and the kind of attraction it's getting it's a third 1000 master event from for the wt this year following doha and of course indian world's just completed over the weekend okay. and the exciting thing is that 27 of the top 30 players are here in this tournament it definitely gives credence uh, to this battle and the excitement expected in the course of the fortnight i agree exciting tournament for me I look at you know we talked about indian worlds this yeah. seemed like the biggest stop we've seen in terms of the talk and now it's miami and do i look at miami it seemed like a spillover of indian worlds yeah because most of these tennis players who are in indian worlds also participating in miami starting from the younger lads the, the names you've mentioned the likes of rogers and and named them zank all of them it's exciting the way it's going and quite exciting look at the numbers look at the top 30 participants in this particular tournament exciting big ups for me and i'm looking forward to what happened in indian world the third one rather miami the third 1000 masters event taking place in tennis such big 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 and we talked about a point when it has to do with the 1000 masters event everyone seems to be rattling for this particular event and the way it's going we're going to see a lot of upsets and i'm waiting for that right now when you talk about upsets um we didn't quite see you know many in the first two masters you know in doha the usual names came up we're talking about anna contevich we're talking the paulo badosas mm -hmm. the simona halep we're talking the eager show attack we wound up particularly on we're talking the Mane sakari and the rest of them mm -hmm. we didn't quite see any player break through and of course um give us some potential stunners that followed up at indian wells as well it was same regular names up until the semi-finals and you know um the quarterfinals and the semi-finals where paulo badosa was aiming to become the first lady in over 30 years to defend the Indian world's crown, but it didn't end up that way. So it was the same name from Doha, Igor Shortek, who's now risen to number two in the world that came in and, of course, um, you know, got that particular title at the end of the event in the course of the fortnight. Now, are you expecting anything different, you know, here in Miami or same old, same old? Well, for me, I followed Doha, a few offsets one way or the other. I followed Indian Worlds, I saw a few, the likes of Stepenko being beaten and quite early in the tournament. Mm -hmm. And you see the likes of Asabalenka and the rest also struggled a bit. But every tournament comes with its own difficulties. There's usually the younger lads coming on, they want to show class, they want to play quite well, telling the world they arrive. And the only way to announce yourself is to beat a top gun, be a top player. And that's what we've seen in tennis. But I agree to one fact that there have been really improvement in the female category, the WTA of tennis. Why? Because there's been a bit of stability. Also, we've seen the rise of the likes of um, Iga Swatex moving so high, Saria, you know, doing the same too, playing quite well. It's been the story of tennis. And so far, I'm enjoying what's happening because the numbers are coming in. These players are stepping up. Um, they're getting to that position where we're trying to separate the women from the girls. 
And it's what it is. And also in the male category, it's the same thing. We're trying to separate the men from the boys. Exciting stuff for me. Exciting tennis for me. And it's living up to the billing. I'm quite excited about the 1000 Masters or like the 250 and 500. You see a few stars coming in, not the biggest stars you could think of, but for the Masters, highly dominated by the big stars. And they're doing that bit to get the results where it ought to be. And so far, so good. Doha was exciting. Indian Wells, exciting. And I'm looking forward to what Miami hit, Miami Open would be. It would be quite exciting for me. All right, now there's uh, an all American first round clash. We're talking about uh, Amanda Nismova taking mm. Shelby Rogers. Uh, the last time they met uh, at Charleston was about um, uh, Rogers coming down, uh, coming back rather from a set down uh, to win against um, Amanda Nismova and she now leads. The uh, head to head heading into this particular clash. We're talking Van Utnik also in action in the first round, taking Mata Kustik from Ukraine, and of course, likes of Zeng, you know, we're talking uh, Putia Yulensova, and, and the rest of them also in action. Well, it's going to be an exciting time in uh, the in next fortnight that we can guarantee you are expecting a replica of what we saw in Doha, and of course, in Miami, talking about the 1000 Masters event, and we certainly hope. This, this one leaves up to the building at least will be treated to some spectacle, some upsets. Well, who doesn't love upsets? Well, we do, if you don't. <laughs> now, let's still stay in Miami and switch our attentions from the WTA and uh, talk about the ATP very, very quickly, Blyden. And the attention mm. and, of course, um, the ultimate desire of this man, we're talking from world number one, Daniel Medvedev, mm. would be to reclaim the sport he held for just over two weeks. I'm talking about the world number one, but you look at his draw, it's a very tricky one. It has the likes of, um, you know, Andy Murray in it. It has the likes of Taylor Fritz, mm. you know, has uh, the likes of Hobbit Hukas, who's a defending champion, you know, and all. No easy way back to the top. Well, it's never been easy in the 1000 Masters, as far as I'm concerned. Um, Hobbit Hukas, defending champion, top notch player at this point. I begin to wonder, first of all, before I even talk about Medvedev, I begin to wonder how the likes of uh, Hookers got to win it last year. Yeah. Just like in Indian Wells, we saw Nori won it. And I, it seemed like a lot of players sort of stayed back last year. And this year, everyone is coming for it. Well, it's, the same story. For the it's the same story. Like, let's say, for instance, next year, 2023, mm. we'd look back and say, how did Taylor Fritz win that one? Right, I but Telefritz, Telefritz had to, you know, <laughs> dig deep and did all of the magic that made up to the finals where he defeated, you know, Rafa Nadal. So you can always look back anyway. Surely they, they came up with their metal. It, it goes on to show the improvements of some of these younger players, players who are not who are not classified as the biggest of names mm. and their performances in big competitions because you have to find a way and create that offset, just like Fritz did. But for Medvedev. I think it's going to be a tournament he really has to take it serious because, um, seriously, because um, looking at his antecedents, former world number one now, it's not easy to be a world number one. They've been called further, former. Yeah. Just barely two weeks. If he's able to get to the quarterfinals, it would be good for him. He might reclaim the position again in the Miami Open. But it's going to be quite difficult for these folks because I think she, he'll start out with... Um, What's the name now? Former world number one now. Yeah, uh, Andy, Andy Murray. Murray. Andy Murray, probably second round with Andy Murray. And the stakes will get higher and higher and higher. I think it's going to be very difficult for Andy Murray to get a win in this one against Medvedev. But it's a tournament, Medvedev, but find a way to go even higher, probably to the semifinals and think about winning it. If he gets to win this one, he becomes a world number one again. Nothing changes for him. Exceptional player on his day, but in tennis, there's usually upsets. And I'm really looking forward to this upset taking place in Miami Open. All right, now let's talk about those with the outside chance, outside, you know, the big rank players. Mm. Um, for Alexander Zverev and Stefano Sipis, ranked um, number three and, of course, number five in the world, respectively, their stocks have plummeted, you know, over the last, um, you know, couple of masters events and, mm. you know, a couple of tour events for this particular. I haven't quite started with the same fire and, of course, with the same uh, determination and zeal we saw them starting off last year. Now, but you can't rule players like this off. You know, it takes one tournament and it could just tick off for them. And, of course, it could transmogrify their fortunes and could just be the turning corner, you know, um, they need. And, of course, what they need to pick up that form and recapture what we know them to be one of the best tennis players on course. But the big question now will be, 
a Wool Miami Open presents them that opportunity and can they grab it if those opportunities open up here? I, I don't know. I don't know, but there's something uh, strictly wrong for me, from my point of view, with um, Verif as well as Sissipas. Good players on the day. With the history, going through the history, history books, you realize that Verif is such a good player. And Sissipas, it wasn't a method when he got to wall number four at the time. Exceptional player. But they've not been able to gather the strings together. That's what I've noticed. And in tennis, the, the biggest problem has always been making those mistakes, not being consistent, not being that player that gets the point and take it slow and steady and gets the win. And it's been the issue with um, Sissipas and very forming. I really hope that they get to recover in Miami Open and play the best of tennis they could play. But it's always going to boil down to that focus in tennis. We've seen the likes of uh, Rafael Nadal do this over and over again. Once in a while, you get beaten. And on your night or your day, you get to get the win the way it turns out for you. And it could be exciting. But the fine line is usually that point where you keep your focus together. You keep trying to see how you play tennis without making those mistakes. And it's going to be that fine margin for Verif and Sissi Pass for me. Right. From Miami, the stars have followed the sun down here to mm. Florida for the uh, Miami Open. And we're hoping that, of course, would have um, uh, the events live up to the billing. Now let's um, talk football very quickly and blind there's no bigger story mm. from uh, the continent of Africa. In fact, um, global football, because the leagues are on break as we speak, particularly Europe, we're talking about the international break here. So we've got to talk about national team assignments. And the Super Eagles camp is swelling. Moses Simon, the latest to arrive. Um, the reports we have from the Super Eagles camp about um, 30 minutes ago. Now we hear the number of players in camp has uh, risen to 13. We're expecting more arrivals later today, but they will have their first training session later today as well. And it's um, a feeling close. And of course, you just have that feeling that, you know, the clash is close. We talk about Friday for mm. the first leg against the Black Stars of Ghana. Big game. Big game. I like the fact that the players realize this. Mm. The coming, resuming come as early as possible. Yeah. Not many delays. I'm hopeful that the likes of Simon will be around because he's really the maxman. I think everyone is really looking forward to Osimen showing that display. He wasn't part of the Nations Cup team. And we're hoping that he comes around and, and plays quite well. We see those goals. He's scoring for Napoli. He's scored for the Super Eagles. It's a big game, Brad James. And we hear that the Ghanaians too are gathering themselves, yeah. doing their best. Everyone is turning up for this event. It never gets bigger than this. Whenever Ghana faces Nigeria, Nigeria faces Ghana. It's usually such a cracker, such rivalry, big game, anytime, any day. All right, now um, let's look at the uh, Ghana mm. uh, camp. And of course, the very latest. Now we hear Coach um, Otto Ado is really squad for this particular clash. Mm. Some new names on um, the horizon and of course um, very shocking most shocking name on that team list would have to be Jordan Ayu plays club football for Crystal Palace yeah. uh, we had it tested positive for COVID-19 and of course um, missed Crystal Palace um, FA Cup mm. you know game quarter final game against um, Everton over the weekend I set a spark where they won by four goals nothing mm. standard rule is that 10 days less 10 days which would mean could miss potentially both legs. Mm. But if he returns a negative test consecutively at least three times, then it could feature. And Coach Atoado showing his importance to the side mm. has decided to gamble, place him on that team list. Well, he's got a chance to play, particularly when he put that side side with the facts that his keeper of the side, uh, Didi Ayu, talking brother. his elder brother, mm. misses the party through suspension. Uh, that's why it's terrible to get careless suspensions at times. Mm. Um, that red card in the Nations Cup, terrible. That's why he won't be part of the Knicks. But he's a big player. When you look at the big players in Ghana, in terms of club football, you begin with Jordan and you, and you look at Pate to being part of that mix. They're the biggest players you can think of um, in this group. And Jordan and you, every coach will want him. The beauty about Jordan and you has been the fact that He's not just a striker that scores goals. He doesn't get that number of goals for you, but he's such a hard-working striker. He lays those passes, makes those runs, moves to the wing, and gets busy. He can be so troubling, but lets others get the goal. He's that kind of player, and I think the coach did well to put his name there. That's Slim Hope. 
hopefully that they could return with negative tests back to back in the next 24 hours and you have a couple of these negative tests and he'll be ready to go to play against the Super Eagles. All right, now, before we take a look at the uh, Black Star squad mm. as released by Coach Otado, uh, comprehensively for this particular clash, let's get back to talk about the Super Eagles of Nigeria yeah. and um, some of the alterations. Um, yesterday, we had former, you know, uh, Super Eagles goalie talking, Peter mm. Rafai talking, mm -hmm. saying, even in the absence of um, Wolf and Didi, mm. we've had Innocent Bonke now invited to fill up that space. He says we'll have enough quality. Frank Onyeka can step up. Now, you look potentially into that clash and the midfield battle will be very key and crucial. Yeah. When you look at a player like Thomas Partey arriving, mm -hmm. the Ghanaian camp playing, you know, one of the best football he's ever played with Arsenal at the moment. Mm -hmm. So that means, you know, he's going to bring that physical presence in the middle of the park. You look at the Nigerian forward and how the midfield game is very crucial for us. Have we got those players to start up in the absence of Wolf and Didi hustle for the ball, show that physicality and, of course, stamp the authority in the middle of the park, you know, in the face of such a competition like Thomas Party. I think for me, uh, before I even talk about Party and the midfield, when you look at the Nigerian lists, list of players where they're playing and the quality on the side, and you go to Ghanaian's lists and you look at the quality on the side, I think the, the Nigerian names send shockers to Ghanaians. Because you look at all the names, even in the midfield. I was going through the Ghanaian list and I saw a couple of players coming in from the USA Major League and all that. And not playing the biggest of clubs. But we know it's a rivalry. We know the rivalry, what's involved. It's always going to be difficult. Very tough game for me. But from a midfield point of view, uh, you can take anything away from Nigeria. Uh, Pate is such a big player, quite an experienced player. But he can do the job alone. Look at Nigeria's midfield. You know that the likes of even Alexi Wobi will be drafted in. Uh, for me, that's what I'm looking at towards this game. I want to see a game where Kalechi Hanacho, Alexi Wobi. Now, Wobi misses the party, you know, through suspension as well. Um, he got a red card in the game against Tunisia. Ah. Yeah, so he misses. Oh, so, so you have to oh, plan for man. you have to plan for a game without you know uh, Alexander. Iwobi. It's true. Yeah. It's true, brother. It's going to be difficult now mm. because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be difficult now. You know why? I was looking at the first leg, bringing a technical game, not just a physical game. The Ghanaians are going to be very physical coming, especially from the midfield. There's going to be a lot of running around. So make it more like a technical game. We we'll knock the ball around, push the ball around. And before you know, the stabilize the Ghanaian. Who knows? Get a one goal in. Come to Nigeria and finish the job. That's how I looked at it. But it will be missing the party. Uh, the coach has to find a way to solve that problem now, from my standpoint. All right, now, um, let's go... The wing play, we always talked about the plethora of wingers we mm. have and, you know, um, how we could build our game around those wingers and what to mean for the national team. We talk about the, the return of um, Victor Moses, or, you know, Victor Simon, I beg for pardon, now to the side. So he needs supplies. The wingers have to find a way to get in the balls now. So we're talking the likes of Moses Simon, the likes of uh, Samuel Chukwese, um, the likes of Adama Lukman, if they've got, they have a chance. Ahmed Musa, the keeper, he oh, was drafted. He doesn't have a chance. Well, you don't like him as in the squad, as a no, keeper like, side. I, I like this keeper Now, outside. Ahmed Musa, don't like him or leave him, is there. We have to you know, could potentially <laughs> play as well. Now, um, <laughs> how do we, you know, move away from the um, deficiency, if I'm to use that word now, for lack of a better word, in the middle of the park, to get our wingers to stretch the Ghanaians and get something off that mature clear game? I think that's what we're left with. Because I look at Onyeka would be in the middle. Yeah. And Joe Aribo in the middle, probably yeah, two of them. We're going to carry Tebu is back uh, as well. Tebu is back, but we don't know how fit he is. Yeah, that's the problem we now. We don't know how fit he is. is, this, is this, can he give him a starting it, It's a similar problem with even the defenders who are talking in the absence of Kenneth Romero. You know, um, William Trustekong hasn't kicked the ball since he returned to the, you know, from the Nations Cup to join the Hornets at Watford. Uh, Leomba Lugun is just getting back to, you know, full fitness. But we've got the likes of... He's a goal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got the likes of Semia Jai, you know, please, um, with um, West Brom Javion. We've got um, Oloa Shemi Logo, who, who plays for, you know, for, for the other guy who plays for Paderborn as well. Mm, involved, Collins. you know, Collins. So Jamilo Collins involved in the setup. Do we alternate and 4 1 strat something other than the Weibo war? A lot of people are looking forward to that reunion at this particular 
you know, um, World Cup qualifying fixture? Or is this a game too big for that kind of gamble? I look at, I look at the Ghana inside, I look at Nigeria inside. Each time I look at the Ghana inside, I have hope for Nigeria. But you, but because you're potentially maybe looking out for names. Well, football has a part in with names. Yeah, but, not just the names, quality. Yeah, I'm but only disappointed that the likes got, of Awazim yeah. wasn't invited for this competition. Yeah. Awazim wasn't invited. Uh, he could play probably from a central, a central defense. He's a strong guy, but he wasn't invited. But look at the qualities defensively. Whether it's Sami Ajay or Nemet, whoever plays for Superbus, we've got quality there. We've got quality from the wing, from the fullbacks, left fullback, right fullback. There are a number of quality players there from an African perspective. Yeah. Maybe globally, if you go to a typical World Cup, you say, oh, they're a bit average, but from an African perspective, they're quality for me. Right, and now, they can get a job done. Now, let's look at you know, the phenomenon we talked about earlier, you know, looking at the team list. Mm -hmm between Ghana and Nigeria, and then, you know, the Ghanaian least inspiring confidence in that the Super Eagles can get the job done over the, the course of the two-legged tie and qualify for the World Cup proper. Now, a lot of people are scared because there's some X-factor kind of thing with the Ghanaian national team. A lot of unknown names in that particular setup, you know, while it gives optimism for the Super Eagles because we have a lot of familiar names, guys who understand themselves within that setup, maybe that's one leisure they don't really have. But there's that thing with um, unknown names. They could spring surprises. And when the surprises they come want up, to play. you know, they want to make a name for themselves. Yeah. They want to, you know, uh, imprint and make history with Super of Nigeria. They are fresh talents. They want to build their own success story. How dangerous is that from a neutral perspective for the Super Eagles? I'm always neutral. Um, it's very dangerous, Brad James. Very, very dangerous because you're meeting players who don't care about your names. They want to make a name. Themselves. And we don't know how they play. <laughs> yeah, we don't know how to play. They want to make a name for themselves. And they want to represent the country quite well because everyone seems to give the match or the qualification to the Super Eagles with ease. And it doesn't work that way. Football is played on the field of play. Recent times we saw Kwa United defending champions being mauled. It's the same thing. But it always boils down to character. It always boils down to commitment. Even if you, are, you have the biggest of names, you can be beaten when you're not committed, when you're not giving everything to the game. It's what it is in football. But I think the two sides know the stick. The Nigerian side, we know the stick. On the other hand, I have some fears. What are my fears? For the Super Eagles, from a Super Eagles point of view now. My fears are with the coach, the Super Eagles coach. Will he take the right decisions? Because I, I remember the Nations Cup against the right, right decisions in terms of um, technical play or technical play, personal selection. All those, yeah, the combination of all that. I watched a game against Tunisia, and at some point he was very confused. You could see the doubts around him, the uncertainties around him. And that's not a character, that's not the kind of coach I want to lead the Super Eagles. I want a coach that's sure. I want a coach that gives all. I want a coach that knows how to solve the problem on time. And for me, um, it, it seems like I'm critical about Aguavon, but for me, I have not really seen that in Austin Aguavon. But let's hope that the boys turn up, because sometimes it's beyond the coach. Some the coach can do the bit he does, but the players ought to turn up. They ought to realize how big this game is. They ought to know they have to go to the World Cup and talk about the goalkeeper. We talked about it. We still have the number one, Okoye being the number one. And yeah. for me, he, he's our best. He, he might not make you say that a couple of um, days ago in the build up to this Pacheca clash that Marco Okoye remains the Super Eagles number one so far. Um, that must set to Marco Okoye. So now the task, and of course, his attention must turn expeditedly towards um, getting the job mm. done for the Super Eagles in between the sticks over the course of the two leg time. It's what it is. I've seen him in his club side in recent times, playing quite well, yeah. making a lot of saves and making the numbers. Um, when you look at his performances, you realize he's a guy that wants to improve. He's a guy that wants to show class. He's a guy that thinks he can actually get to the highest level of goalkeeping in world football. Exceptional talent for him. Once in a while, Players are bound to make mistakes. Yeah. As we saw at the Nations Cup, a lot of people blamed him. But it's football. It's what it is, and it's exciting. For me, Brad James, I think this game will be settled from the attacking point of view the most. The attack that clicks gets the win. Nigeria has the potential to get the win even in Ghana. If they get their acts together, because look at it technically from a Ghanaian point, the difficulty from a Ghanaian point of view. Everyone is doubting you. You have to bring in that energy. You have to attack. And you at home, Firstly, and you have this team with all the big names. You've got to be careful. While you're attacking, 
I, I picture it strong. I'm, I'm, I'm really sad because Ndidi wouldn't be available. If Ndidi was available, I would have just given Nigeria a straight win all through. Yeah. But he's not available. So we have to make do with what we have in the middle. Moving to, but all we need to do is block resolutely. When you do that, defend when you ought to. Keep the balance in the midfield. And who knows, the chance would come. Slot the pass. You have all the big experienced strikers and they get a goal for you and it's done and dusted. So 13 players in campus. We speak and uh, the conversation built up to that uh, crunch tie. And of course, we talk about um, uh, the ultimate prize being one of five tickets available for the continent of Africa at the World Cup League this year in Qatar. We'll talk about more names arriving. We understand the likes of Kelechi Yanacho, Ola Aina, Semi Ajayi, Leomba Logun, Ahmed Musa, William Trustekong, and Arai, you know, are among the early beds who have arrived the Super Eagles camp. We're hoping for more arrivals as we expect the first training session later. Uh, today we'll have more conversations ahead of that particular clash in the coming days well it looks all balanced you look at the last uh, eight encounters mm. in world cup qualifiers um uh, four wins two splits between nigeria and ghana and there's been four draws what will separate the black stars of ghana and nigeria ultimately over the course of this two-legged time that will be the conversation uh, going forward but for now let's leave there lighten very quickly mm. and before we talk about women's football and the, the Women's Champions League mm. continuing later, uh, you know, today we've got two clashes. Let's talk about Blessing Recovery very quickly now. Okay. We hear that she wouldn't appeal that 10-year doping ban mm. by the Athletics Integrity Unit. We're expecting her to appeal to CAS, but the deadline is now gone by, which was March 18, and CAS, the Court of Arbitration of Sports, have come up with a big statement saying Blessing Recovery hasn't appealed that particular decision. Where now lies our fix? I, I think the ban would take place. Blessing did dub. Well, you can't, you can't categorize Oh, well, he's, he's not she's not appealing. Look at it. What's her age now? While Blessing was younger, she, she couldn't match up the results at the time. And then she started performing quite well as 30 something <laughs> prior to the Olympics. When I noticed that, I realized there was something strange about her performance. So you you categorically saying here. getting the dots, getting the dots together. There are some things that are glaring, Brad James. The dots together. When you were younger, you couldn't perform at this level, and suddenly, while you're declining, you're performing at this what, level. What, and going to the, the going place, to, where's the place for um, age and experience showing up for you in a race? Come on, right? You look at it now. Come on. Well, it's, you, it's different. You, you it's different back, instead of other sports. You look like back, football. You look back at Blessing and see, mm. well, um, in the early hours of her career, she was you know, troubled by a lot of niggling injuries. She got the started out. She stayed consistently fit over the last three, four, five years. And maybe it gives credence to the results we're getting. Okay. Le technically, let me sound like this. Maybe I'm, I'm going too far, trying to put the dots quickly together. But you know, you know, the question would be, her, you, you sound too sure. The question would be, why is she not appealing? appealing? She, she came out to tell everybody she's going to appeal. From the collections of her results, the conclusion was basically that she had been involved with doping prior to the Olympics. To bad Do substances. Come on, is it not doping? No, it, where, where lies her career now? Is it, is it technically over for her? Because, you know, 10 years. She returns to the sport at what age? And she she, she won't compete. return. It's over. One word or the other, except something changes. So but based on how it is now, I think it's over. Right. She's and done a bit. Um, I'm proud of her. Her performances over the years sadly had to turn out this way for me, for her. But I have been proud of her. Great talent we had. But for me, it's over now. Oh. It's in the history books. Blessing or Calvary. Well, I I don't want to go with Blyden on this one. It's not over yet. It's not over. Blessing. It's not over. Just stay strong. Let her appeal. We'll, we'll get the result of the appeal. Stay strong. It's not over. Mm. Now, let's talk about the Women's Champions League very quickly. Mm. PSG by Munich. Well, that would be potential banana skin if you were the men's game. Yeah. And elsewhere, we've got um, <laughs> and our classic on the horizon, and that's mm. remarkable considering what happened on Madrid's 120th anniversary of the weekend mm. when the men's team met at the Benibao. 
Real Madrid versus Barca. And when you look at the Barca Feminino team, it's, it's different from what the men, you know, have. They've won the last six La Liga titles. And you look at, they're unbeaten in mm. 24 games. They're looking to go the entire season unbeaten. What well, looks like here, Real Madrid has got no chance. Well, but I have to give credit to Real Madrid. Massive improvement over the years, the female Real Madrid side. Yeah, it's oh. not, the, the team is not even up to three years yet. Mm. So massive improvement, getting to this level of the Champions League, quarterfinals of the Champions League. Mm. But it seemed done and dusted in favour of Barcelona. And the beautiful thing about the female game, the highest numbers we had in terms of fans' participation in the female game have been about 63,000 at a time, yeah. uh, where Barcelona met Espanyol at the time. And now we've heard that tickets are already being sold for this particular match, over 70,000. And it shows that it's massive, yeah. a big uh, classical. The interest, the interest in, in women's uh, football is growing, particularly in Europe, but we can't quite say the same for Nigeria. It's been the same story in Africa, mm. right, James? But let's not go there because it's a long conversation. All right. but be that as it may, exceptional game of football for me tonight. Barcelona facing Real Madrid. It's going to be big. But Barcelona, they have the the World Football of the Year. Yeah. They have all the best strikers. Yeah, you know, the Alexia I give it to Barcelona. The Madrid, is just, the Madrid is, are just going to better numbers. Maybe we'll have a similar scoreline with the male game, the, the men's game we saw over, over the weekend. I haven't talked about Sato Shola. He's a top scorer in, in La Liga. 19 goals in 16 games. I was waiting for you to do that. Banging the numbers, banging the goals. Yeah, right on, brother. Exciting. <laughs> Indeed. Now, that's the most time I'll ask to go here. Thank you very much, Vladimir, for joining. So good we to be on the show. appreciate you. So good uh, to be on the show. Uh, we'll return later tomorrow to keep tracking the Super Eagles camp and bring you the very latest from there. So we build up to this all-important World Cup playoff clash between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Glasses of Ghana. First up on Friday in Kumasi and then four days later, at the Mushida Bila National Stadium in Abuja, we would have our turn hosting our rivals, the Black Stars from Ghana. Now, the conversation continues uh, beyond the screen. Uh, we're on social media as well, so let's uh, get talking. Catch us uh, Spectrum TV NG on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. Our website checks out www.spectrumtv.ng. And of course, um, let's continue our conversations from there. We're also on YouTube. And you get a chance to enjoy a lot more exciting content. Check out Spectrum TV. And of course, um, get to delight yourself with the um, eye-catching uh, content you'd see on our YouTube page. I am Bright James, alongside Blyden. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Uh, for today, we to the screen later tomorrow. Have fun. Do enjoy the rest of your day. to qualify. In the first half, but they scored with their second in the second half. Come second steps, what is over. Tony Iso coming up short. The time is finished on Chariot 2. From the 10th of the United States, Chua misses the free throw. The U.S. is... It's over. It becomes a two possession game. If he misses, you're going to need a 90 foot heat. Mr. Wolf, the final heat from Mr.